hello and welcome back today i'm going to be sharing with you some of my february makes now i'm aware we're not quite at the end of the month as yet but i have already made four things this month and i have made a good start on something else as well so i thought it was probably about time that i shared the things that i have made with you and then that way i can make a start on my march makes so the first thing that I want to share with you is my Sew so Over It Elsie dress which I am wearing here. Now the fabric that I have used for this dress is an Asda duvet cover. What I love about the Asda duvet covers is not only do they come in an amazing print, normally the back of the duvet is a completely different print which you can use as a contrast. And I've done that with the lining. So I'm going to give you a sneaky peek of my facing. Here we go, teeny tiny little ice gems. So I'm going to stand up and I'm going to give you a twirl and then I'm going to tell you my thoughts on this pattern. I'm not quite sure why I bothered to put high heels on because in fairness, I'm not going outside, it's pouring me rain. So I'm going to chop my head off just so I can show you the lovely box pleats. They're really beautiful. We've got two at the front here, one on either side, and then there's another two on the back. So they sculpt the figure really, really nicely. The only downside that I can see to this pattern is the bodice. So at the moment, A, I haven't done it up to the very, very top, mainly because I'm home on my own and I simply can't reach the zip. But as you can see, with it flat against your body, the straps sit right on the very, very edge of my shoulders, which means I can't wear a bra underneath this dress, which means my boobs aren't where they should be. They should be up here, they're down here. And so everything looks like I'm pancake chested and squashed. So it's just not right. If I do have a bra on, all you can see is my bra straps and these straps, when you bring them in, over where your bra strap would be, you end up with a huge gaping hole that's just going to catch your biscuit crumbs, which is quite good really for this dress. Bodice fail, skirt love. What I will say about this pattern is that I think it's probably best suited to a heavier brocade fabric rather than just a cotton. It would hold the box pleats a lot better. Possibly even a scuba fabric as well might hold them quite nicely. I do love the skirt, that's really, really nice, but the bodice just doesn't work for me. There's nothing wrong with the pattern in itself, it's just very typical to a sew over it dress bodice. I find exactly the same thing happens with Betty. I've got very little, very narrow shoulders. If they were out slightly wider, I probably wouldn't have those issues. So if you do have a problem with Betty falling off your shoulders, then you're going to find the same with Elsie. What I'll probably do though, is I will make another one of these at some point because I love the skirt, but I will use the Tilly and the Buttons Lilo bodice top, which fits really, really nicely on me. So I'm planning on going to the Knitting and Stitching show at Olympia next Thursday. I am going to wear this dress because I'm not going to be wearing it like this, just off the shoulder. I can wear it with a bra, it doesn't matter if my straps are on show because I'll put a little cardigan with it, but I'm also gonna put a really big chocolate brown petticoat underneath it because I think that will be lots of fun. So it's a dress that you certainly won't miss me in um, if you're hoping to catch up with me at the show. So I'm going on Thursday, I'm going with my mum, so look out for us. We're hoping to catch up with some of our fellow dressmakers and podcasters and vloggers um, because the lovely Gabby, Gabby Young from Gabadashery is hosting a meetup at some point point on the Thursday so if you're going to be there do make sure you tap me on the shoulder give me a shout and say hi so a quick little bit about the pattern itself as with every sew over it pattern that I've tried um, it puts together nicely it cuts out nicely all of the pieces fit together nicely um, the instructions are fairly clear they certainly are clear for the skirt um, but the bodice exactly the same as with Betty has the strange matching the shoulder seams up back to front pulling them round twisting them convoluted instructions that I simply cannot get my head round um, now I was taught to make clothes and dresses in the old school method and so here's what I do to make my life a lot easier I simply join my front bodice and my back bodice at the shoulder seams and I join my facings at the shoulder seams 
Then I lay the two items right sides together and I sew all the way around the neckline, all the way around both armholes, and then I put my hands up through the front of my garment and I pull the back sections through the shoulder seams and I bag the bodice out. Once I've done that, then I join the side seams, right sides together, and I have a perfect bodice that's fully lined without any faffing about. Then I make the skirt, and then I join the bodice to the skirt, and then I insert the zip. So bite-sized sewing instructions there. One day I will do you a tutorial on how I do it. So next time I make myself um, a garment with a bodice, I'll make sure I record it for you. Anyway, on to my next garment. Next up is my Tilly and the Buttons Clio that I teased you with the fabric for the other day. Now I absolutely love this make. The fabric is just gorgeous. And I'm just gonna get in close so you can check out my top stitching. Let me take you over to the light. Check that out. Beautiful yellow top stitching. Done double lines on the pocket. And then just single lines everywhere else. Love it. There's nothing bad to be said for this pattern. It's a Tilly pattern. You cannot go wrong with a Tilly pattern. Instructions are fantastic. Everything lines up as it should do. It's a dream to make and it really didn't take very long to sew together at all. I'm gonna give you a twirl. to say really that I haven't said already fantastic pattern try it out great fabric which came from so loco by the way and so loco offers fantastic customer service so if you do order anything from them do expect really lovely packages in the post it was just like Christmas when I opened my lovely fabric um, I know that they did sell out of this fabric myself and another lady made a Clio with this fabric popped it on Instagram and the world went nuts for it um, I think they've got some more in stock, but it is extremely limited, so you might want to pop over and have a look. Now, as I mentioned on Instagram, for those of you that follow me, I am very, very fortunate in that the lovely Tilly has invited me to the launch of her new book, Stretch, um, which is coming up fairly soon. I'm not going to tell you any more about that because obviously it's all hush-hush, but... I am going to be going and I'm really looking forward to it. So that's the main reason that I made this particular garment. Granted, it's not a stretchy garment, but it is gorgeous. And I wanted to make sure that when I was there, I was wearing something that was one of Tilly's patterns. So on to my next make. So next up is my jumper dress made from this lovely knitted fabric that I showed you in my Walthamstone Market fabric haul. Now this fabric was about £1.50 a metre I think and I bought two metres of it and I wanted to make a big cow necked jumpery stroke sweater um, ideally and so I asked for your recommendations and thank you so much to everybody who gave me your suggestions there were absolutely loads to choose from but the one I picked came from Sam Chandler got it here in a post-it note because I'm going to forget it's called the so so easy batwing sweater top and it comes from so 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 s-e-w easy dot com I'll put the link down below so you can find it it's called the Batwing Sweater Top Stroke Dress. Now, I made it follow the pattern explicitly. It does look lovely as a dress. I'm gonna stand up and show you. But the minute you start to walk or sit down, it creeps up to your bottom and shows the world absolutely everything. So I shall be wearing it as a jumper. But let me show you it in dress format first. see very 80s-esque kind of power dresser I'm not sure that I like the neckline when I'm sitting down it's okay when I'm standing up um, 
There's no front or back to this garment. It's simply made with two pattern pieces and a neckband. Um, so the pattern pieces are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which way round you have the garment. Um, the neckline sits a bit funny when you sit down. But I'll stand up and show you. Pick you up. So that's a bit better. As you can see, it's kind of boat neck. Um, it sits sort of off the shoulders. I think with a big cowl it could be really, really nice, but certainly just for slobbing around and bumming around in, um, it's going to be nice and comfy. I use my usual method for putting the neckband in as well, and you can see it's all nicely lined up. So I'm going to go and put some leggings on with it so I can show you what it's like as a jumper. So as a jumper, this baby has a lot more potential. Let me give you a twirl. See it bags out nicely over the big band that sits around the bottom. And it's super comfy. So I think I'll get a lot of wear out of this top. Um, certainly in this kind of time of the year where it's a little bit chilly and you want to put something on to take the chill off, but it's not absolutely freezing. The only thing is, is I have absolutely no idea what kind of fabric it is, but it seems to hold the most inordinate amount of static. As soon as I put it on, bear in mind I do carry a lot of electricity anyway. Those of you that have worked out with me in the gym will know that I can electrocute you with the touch of a finger. But it does hold an awful lot. So I put it on and I get cracks and sparks as I put it on. As I walk around in it, funnily enough, it kind of shakes off its electric charge um, and it doesn't get any worse. But it is incredibly static. So there's obviously some kind of man-made fiber in this that is causing that to happen. So if any of you know what that's likely to be, I'd be really interested to know. I really love the fabric, as I say, it really is like a piece of knitting. Um, it's very stretchy um, and it's very cheap and cheerful, but hey, just for knocking up something that you're slobbing around in, it's a really, really nice garment. So thank you for the recommendation, Sam. My next make and my final make for February is another Rivage Raglan top. Now I wanted to see how the Rivage Raglan would make up in Ponte because I've tried it in a very, very thin stretch. I didn't like it. I tried it in a knit fabric and I loved it. So I thought a Ponte or a lightweight jersey would work fairly well, but I wanted to test it out. I didn't want to spend money on Ponte to find that it would look absolutely horrendous. So I dug deep in my scrap basket. Now what you can see here is a mixture of all of the cocos that I have ever made. And if you go and have a look back in the archives, you can watch me review all of my cocos. In fact, I'll pop a link for it down below. So I've got my spotty Pont de Roma cocoa. I've got my stripy Pont de Roma cocoa. I've got my swirly one. And round the neckband here, I've got my very short skater dress style. What you'll also notice is I've got two-tone arms. So how did I do it? With the help of my trusty overlocker friend here, the overlord, I basically pieced together all my large pieces of Pont de Roma and I worked out what kind of pattern pieces I'd be able to cut out of them. I could see straight away that I had enough of this lovely swirly one that I'd be able to cut the front pattern piece in one go. So I did that. Next up, I looked for a piece that was big enough to cut the back. Regrettably, I couldn't find a piece that was big enough to cut on the fold. So instead, I cut a pair and simply joined it together. So I'm going to spin round and show you that my back has a seam down the middle. Ta-da! So it's a little bit annoying, but it doesn't bother me that much. The next thing I needed to do was find fabric that was big enough for my arm pattern pieces. Regrettably, I didn't have anything, but I did have some fairly large pieces. So what I did instead was to cut one arm out of the stripy fabric and one arm out of the spotty fabric. And then I sawed them in half at exactly the same point and swapped over the bottom halves, which meant I ended up with one arm with stripes at the top and spots at the bottom and one arm with spots at the top and stripes at the bottom. I simply joined the piece here before then putting it together as an arm. 
Maybe I'll give you a tutorial on that one day too. So let me give you a twirl. It's another top that I'm gonna get loads and loads of wear out of. It's super comfy. It's really nice because it's not as hot as wearing a jumper, but it's also a little bit warmer than just wearing a t-shirt. So another thumbs up to Blank Slate Patterns and the lovely Melly Sews for a wonderful pattern. Again, I'll pop the link down below. I've got some more plans with my jersey scraps coming up, but I'm going to wait until Tilly's book is out because there's a hoodie pattern inside that that I really want to try. But I'm going to go a little bit crazy with my fabric choices. So watch out for March's makes because there's going to be some super jersey concoctions coming your way. So thank you for watching. That's the four garments that I've got made in February. I don't think I've got much time left at the end of this month to get any more done. So I'm not gonna set myself up to fail, but I have got ideas for March. So watch this space. I'll see you again soon.